In this lesson, we will talk about the scientific method. In the previous lesson, we talked about how to acquire knowledge, the different means by which knowledge is acquired. And we all saw that it doesn't matter the method through which you acquire your knowledge, all had its advantages and uh, disadvantages. So this brings us to this lesson about the scientific method, which is a systematic way through which scientists acquire reliable information. Keep in mind that science itself is built on the foundation of observations and uh, experimentations. This actually makes science empirical in nature. So when I use the word empirical, I essentially imply that science depends on experimentations and the observations. You see, the scientific method provides a systematic procedure used by scientists in generating and refining, in generating new ideas and refining old ones. The process begins with observations of the world around us. This initial observation is what we call an observational experiment. What you need to understand is that this observational experiment may be planned or unplanned or sometimes preliminary data is collect collected. It may not even be collected at all and the scientist really has no prior expectations of what to expect. But this data collected is often used to find patterns or features that will explain that particular occurrence, that particular natural phenomena. Now, one of the effects of observing the world around us is that it causes us to ask questions. These questions are called research questions. When we ask questions about what we have observed, what comes next? We demand answers. The posited answers to the questions being asked is what we call a research hypothesis. Understand that. A research hypothesis is simply an educated guess or an anticipated response to a research question, which in turn is subject to verification through subsequent experimentation. Understand that the process of actually developing a good hypothesis begins with the identification of a pattern in a series of observations. These observations can either be direct or indirect. For example, predicting the movement of elections in a meadow is an indirect observation. You cannot see elections, talk less of seeing how elections are moving throughout the meadow. An example of a direct observation is measuring how the temperature changing throughout the day. You can feel the heat. So that is an example of a direct observation. What this does is, when we make our observations, we actually develop a mental model. Now, a model is used to predict or describe the behavior of a system or a natural 
a natural phenomenon. So the natural inclination or the natural thing we do when we observe is that we develop these models that we can use to explain how things work. But the question is, is our model correct or incorrect? In other words, is our hypothesis correct or incorrect? Generally, in my research, and what I've observed is that most hypotheses are commonly generated by looking at what other scientists have previously done on that particular topic of interest. My research field for my doctoral studies has to do with nanotechnology. I basically wanted to improve dye-sensitized solar cells. So I went on a journey to manufacture and produce most efficient and effective dye-sensitized solar cells. Now, I, I don't want to bore you with the intricacies of the process. The best way, the, the, how I came up with my research hypothesis was I actually looked at what others have done and based on their work and based on their successes and failures, I came up with a research hypothesis on how to produce or manufacture an effective dye-sensitized solar cell. And that is the procedure used by most researchers in the field. This really is important. A hypothesis is only as valid as the prediction it can make. Understand that a prediction is an expected outcome based on a hypothesis. A prediction is a testable statement. It is not a question. In other words, we can therefore conclude that if a hypothesis is true, then the statement or the predictions made from that hypothesis will necessarily be true. To validate any prediction, Repeated experiments must be conducted and data collected. And the experiments conducted usually have a control. A control is something to compare the variables to during the experiments. Let me give you an example. Let's say you want to study how yellow light affects crops or corn, for example. One way to set up your control is to plant corn on normal daylight and to plant corn using only yellow light. When you get your yield, you will compare the corn produced under normal yellow light with the corn produced under normal light. The corn under normal light is our control. Another example is you, maybe you're working for pharmaceutical industry and they have produced a drug that can be used to cure, let's say, obesity. Now, you pull out, let's say, 100 participants, you will tear the participants into two equal groups. One group is the controlled, and other group is the experimental group. The controlled, you can give them a happy pill, maybe a pill that they will take and it will produce no effect. They call that the place bow. In the experimental group, you will give them the actual drug. Sometimes, in the control, they will give them the most 
common medication for that particular disease. After, let me say, six months or a year, you will compare the progress made by the patients in the experimental group and the patients in the controlled. Therefore, you will have a standard to measure whether your drug is working or not. Now, what happens is that the data which is collected is often analyzed using the best available statistical method. So the process really can be organized in a cyclical pattern. You observe, you ask questions, then you develop answers to those questions called hypotheses. Your hypotheses are used to make predictions which must be testable. So to test your hypothesis, experiments are carried out. The experiments leads to results. If your results confirm your hypothesis, then your hypothesis becomes a theory. But if your experiment fails to confirm your hypothesis, then what happens? We will go back and revisit and revise your hypothesis and start the process all over again. This explains how the systematic process of building reliable information in science is gotten. It is a pleasure bringing to you these lessons. Thank you.